And good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to another live Xanadu Gallery Art Business Academy online critique group session. Today is Wednesday, July 14th, 2021. Uh, good to be back here with you on uh, a Wednesday morning. And I do want to jump right into um, the session and introduce our featured artist. I've got uh, Chris Forrest joining us uh, for this session. And uh, Chris, if I can have you go ahead and unmute yourself, we'll uh, introduce you to the uh, group here. And uh, Chris, you're coming to us. Uh, let's see, it should be asking there for you to unmute. Uh, tell us where you're coming Bye. from, where your studio is located, and then give us a little bit of background. Okay, I am currently in Brigantine, New Jersey, which is a coastal uh, community in New Jersey. Uh, I was always the kid that was supposed to go to art school and then decided at the last minute uh, to study engineering instead. Uh, and I wanted a robust ROTC program. I served 10 years in the army to include Vietnam and Germany. Uh, ended up with a master's degree in civil engineering and kept up the art. And then really the last half of my 10 years in the army uh, got back into the art seriously in my spare time. Linked up with a gallery that was, uh, oh, starting a original graphics program and learned etching and lithography. And I did multi-plate, like 20 color lithography full time for 10 years. Hmm. Uh, the distributor went out of business and I decided I needed a career where I could support a family with some sort of consistency. So basically I was in business for, for 30 years. Uh, tried to keep up with the art study. And really late 2019, early 2020, uh, began painting again. Switched from being a full-time or from a wildlife artist to kind of coastal with wildlife added to it. Uh, and trying to work on values, not using patterns, kind of uh, developing a, a body of work. At the same time, I kind of wanted to test myself and where I was with some of the national juried art shows. And uh, that's kind of been a fun thing. Lots and lots of declines, <laughs> but a couple of hits to, you know, Keep it, keep it interesting. And my guess is any of you that have uh, tried for some of these shows and looked at who gets in, there's that 20% that you can't figure out what the judges were thinking. So when I get in, I figure there's about 500 people out there that are going, how did he make it? So, you know, part of it is just, you know, throw a dart against the wall and sometimes you, you get in. Well, that's a good segue, I think, for us to uh, hop over and look at your work. And you mentioned a little bit about your, um, you, you know, your subject matter and your style. So, so talk to us a little bit, um, you know, about these pieces and where the inspiration and interest is coming from in your subject matter. Uh, I've always kind of been drawn to kind of like rough wood and, and things like that. And I try to spend about one day a week in some, either along the coast, uh, referencing clouds, the water, the marsh, or wildlife. And, and back in the day, I spent like three hours in an eagle flight cage and had those kinds of experiences. Uh, one that uh, if anybody decides to duplicate that, make sure you are not standing underneath where the eagles fly. Uh, <laughs> or you're wearing the hard way. <laughs> or wearing a disposable hat. Uh, this particular particular egret landed on a branch and it was like uh, typically they can be territorial. So that's it's my stump. And so are you, um, you know, as you're getting this subject matter, you, you mentioned you are, um, you know, out in nature. Are you, um, 
photographing your subject matter and then taking that back to the studio, um, doing reference sketches. What's your process for capturing the, the imagery? Okay, I have joined these different art societies this year. And I think every one of these societies has kind of their own culture. And if I, my first and basic society is the Society of Animal Artists. And if I look up different animal artists, uh, one is featured at a pool with a tiger, but half the time they've either got binoculars or a camera and there's some kind of critter in the background. Uh, I guess it's possible, but your mainstream wildlife artist does not do a plain air painting of a tiger. Right. Uh, <laughs> and then I've joined the American Society of Marine Artists. And, and a, a lot of that is plain air, studying the water. Uh, so there's just, and, and like Oil Painters of America, just this plain air movement, which to me is, is a new, new phenomenon. And, and I realize that's probably a learning experience. Uh, and I, I have my little easel ready to go and probably this fall we'll, we'll break it out and actually try some of the plain air. Uh, I just really enjoy the studio work and just nibbling away at a painting. I, I am probably per square inch, one of the slowest painters around. Uh, and I just am enjoying myself with the process. And um, what about uh, your experience? Um, you, you know, you've mentioned that you've entered some, some shows and events. Um, what about other experience with um, showing either in galleries or at art festivals? Um, and, and, and kind of talk a little bit about maybe your sales experience with the work. <laughs> well, in 2020, or maybe it was 2021, I had one genuine sale to a, my best buddy from Vietnam, who was also in my wedding. So he commissioned a piece. Uh, my, my sales have been absolutely zero. Uh, now, back in the day, uh, when I was full time, there were distributors that handled my work. Uh, I know that my, my etchings and lithographs were one time being carried by, I had an account of about 100 galleries. I, oh, hold on here. There we go. And I had uh, a number of, of shows and galleries, you know, one man shows. Uh, and then I guess now I'm just trying to raise my profile, uh, get a body of work together. I have now approached two galleries. Uh, one said that my work was traditional and they're contemporary. The other gallery, when I followed up about two weeks later said, gee, if we didn't contact you, we're not interested. <laughs> so that, that's where the galleries are today. Two down, several to go. Well, um, yeah, and, and I, I think we're going to, from the comments, I know we're going to want to talk uh, about that. Um, but I, I think we've got a couple more images here, and then I want to just briefly look at presentation. Then I would love to get some feedback um, from those of you here in the panel about your impressions on the work. Um, but Chris, talk to us um, about presentation. Um, we're seeing a framed piece here. Would this be fairly typical of how you're approaching the presentation of the work or what, what's kind of the range in terms of presentation? Uh, I would say that's, that's probably the standard though. Since then, I, I'm really happy with my framer. Uh, I have discovered another molding or well, a linen, linen lining and molding that he has that I've gone to. And that's probably about 40% more expensive. Uh, but that, that piece right there was juried into the Copley Society National Show and is currently hanging in Boston. Congratulations on that. Excellent. Well, good. Thank well, 
let's um so let me go ahead if i can and pull some panelists in and get your reaction to the work um the work that you've seen here i know some of you have been on uh, chris's website as well um how does the work strike you and what feedback would you give to chris and if you want to hop in you can throw your hand up in front of the the camera or click on the hand icon and i can bring you in let me start with uh ellen uh ellen hart if you can hop in Hi. Morning. Um, hi, I, I did. Hi. Um, your work is beautiful, by the way. It's it, it's. Um, I really like it. I I enjoy paintings that transport me to another place, and yours do that. I love the ocean, um, which um, sometimes people wouldn't understand it because I live in Mesa, Arizona, but I do love the ocean. I have lived on the coast, on the west coast, um, and my the thing that struck me is you're not consistent with your signature because ah. sometimes it's on the right bottom corner. Sometimes it's on the left bottom corner. Sometimes it says Christopher Forrest. Sometimes it says Chris Forrest. And I, uh, when I was looking at your work, you know, I'd see your, your signature in the bottom left corner. And then I'd look at the next place and I look in the bottom corner and I go, he didn't sign that one. And then I say, oh no, it's on the other side. And so it was a little bit jarring to have it jumping back and forth like that. And so my only suggestion would be to, to pick a way you want to sign your name and a place you want to sign it and stick with it and don't jump around like that because um, people get used to looking for your signature in a certain place. And then if it's not there, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's a just little a little pause. Jarring. Yeah, so we're going to get right to some practical uh, questions here. And Chris, talk about that. What is uh, your process for um, determining where a signature is going to be and, and kind of coming up with your signature? Okay, well, first, thanks for the comments. Anything, let's say in the last 12 months, is going to be Christopher Forrest. Uh, what I try to do is pick the most bland corner for the signature. Uh, be it left or right. Yeah. And, oh, and, oh, go ahead, Chris. One more thing on sales. Uh, I really don't have that many paintings. And a lot on my website are, are listed as on hold. And, and they're, they're kind of set aside. Either they're being entered in a show or they're going to be entered into a show. And so... I think there's a, like the website is fairly new and, and frankly, it, there's just a whole area of, uh, you know, of, of sales working that I, I haven't made any efforts or progress in. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we're definitely going to come back to that and, and have some conversation on that. Uh, we, you know, it's interesting. I don't know that we've really talked much about signing your work or signatures in these sessions previously. And it is it's a fair question. I think a lot of artists, um, you, you know, the tradition is bottom right corner, right? Um, that's where you're probably going to see 90% of, of signatures as you're looking. Although I am beginning to see some artists experiment with moving the signature. You know, if it's unframed work, maybe they're moving it around the side. Um, some of my artists who are doing more contemporary work um, have moved the signature around to the back of the piece. Um, and, and generally speaking, I, I would kind of echo what Ellen said in that there is some power in having some consistency there, of just giving, you know, being reassuring to, to clientele if they are expecting it in the lower right, um, you know, why not give it to them there unless there's a good compelling reason um, to, to move it somewhere else. And I do think, and, and we're looking at a, a piece right now where I do think um, with this piece, with what you've got going on in the lower right corner and the level of detail, um, it, it would be a pretty good argument. I wouldn't want to interfere with the, um, you know, the incredible work that's going on in that wood by signing over it. And so I, I do think that um, I, I'm, I'm going to kind of say you're both right. Ellen, you're right that um, we want to be consistent and, and kind of give people what they're expecting. Um, but if there is ever an argument to be made that, well, um, in, in, on this particular piece, I want to emphasize a particular detail, um, you know, then, then you can, can go ahead and move it. 
Um, you just want to have a good and compelling reason to do that. Um, and, and there really is something to be said, not only for the consistency, but also, um, you know, in terms of kind of the production process of, of creating your work and, um, uh, you, you know, in, in, in an effort to um, uh, kind of increase production and be efficient, the less time you have to spend thinking about or agonizing over certain decisions, um, the, the better. If you can just kind of come up with your standard set of answers to how I'm going to, you know, the scale I work in, the, the um, supplier of the materials that I'm using, uh, the framer um, moldings uh, on, that I'm using with frames, the more you can be consistent in all of that, you know, the, the fewer the decisions you have to make, the more efficient you're gonna be in, in producing more work. And it sounds like Chris, especially with your work, uh, you, you know, where it is more laborious and um, time consuming um, that anything you can do to gain some efficiency is, is going to, to be important. I, um, let, let, let me go ahead. Um, I, I guess anyone wanna hop in with um, a comment or reflection on signatures um, or, or standardization of, of putting together your work. Um, and if not, wanna hop in with additional comments on Chris's art. I'm gonna pause, Kate, let me go to you. Um, Chris, this is great work and I can't help but think that if you were to approach galleries on the East Coast, uh, around Florida, Louisiana, Mississippi, even Texas, I think you would find a lot of galleries that would be very interested in your work. They're kind of like marine galleries. Because I've looked at, you know, when I was searching for galleries for my list, you know, I looked at ones in Maine and, you know, it was this kind of subject matter. So I knew I, my work didn't fit. So don't give up. Just look and find the galleries that are best suited for your work. Yeah, I, I think, um, Chris, I would echo um, th that sentiment where, you know, I received several comments um, submitted um, by email about this that, um, you, you know, as we look at your work and we see the incredible quality of the work and, um, and clearly, I think, you know, a lot of times we're talking about consistency. I don't think there's any question here about the consistency of subject matter and style um, and, and um, uh, you know, the quality of the work that you're producing. In other words, you've got what I would consider to be kind of the, the key ingredients to having a body of artwork that is um, ready to be presented to galleries. Um, and, and that would find a, a pretty ready acceptance. You've mentioned that you've submitted to two. Um, and, and you know, I think all it would take is boosting the number of galleries that you're submitting to to find um, so, some galleries that would be very excited and interested in showing and, and selling your work. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and then as a consequence of that, I think you would also find that there's a, a ready audience out there that would be interested in purchasing. And, and so I guess maybe what it sounds like to me, Chris, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, it sounds like maybe the, 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 the element that's a little bit of a challenge is inventory, that you've got a lot of work um, that is committed to show submissions and, and that kind of thing, and that doesn't leave a large body of work to have in the portfolio and, and ready to present to galleries. Uh, exactly, well, first, Kate, thanks Kate for her comments. Uh, but, Yes, right now my focus has been building a resume and, and trying to get something going there, uh, doing some advertising in, I guess, American art collector and fine art connoisseur, whatever, whatever, whatever the magazines are, two of them. And I am trying to work on a list of galleries uh, that I wanted to submit to. I just kind of stuck my toe in the water just to kind of get an initial reaction. Uh, this area is not gallery heavy to, to be sure. Uh, when somebody thinks art center, uh, they don't think the Scottsdale version of New Jersey. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, yeah. It, you, you know, certainly you may need to 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 reach further afield. Um, and and I want to let's explore what what you just said um, about building a resume. I think it's an an interesting point. Let me hop us back over to see each other here. Um, you, you know, this is a, a great question, and um, and and certainly I know that um, uh, as you mentioned, Chris, and and I've had this conversation with a lot of artists that, um, you know. But there's this sense that there's an opportunity um, to try and gain signature status in some of the you know bigger art organizations to get accepted into shows, win some awards, and that kind of thing. Um, and and certainly there can be some value in that, um, and especially when you're doing a, a specialized subject matter um, like wildlife or or uh, you know, coastal scenes like the work that you're doing, um, that there is some, you know, in the audience that's interested in that work, there can certainly be some, um, uh, some preference given to artists who have, have achieved recognition in that, that area. However, um, I, I do also find that um, you want to be a little bit careful about not overbuilding your resume. Um, you know, to a certain extent, um, you're going to see very real diminishing returns um, in terms of how valuable a line item is on your resume. Um, will a gallery care that there are six um, shows that you've won awards in instead of five? Um, pr probably not. Um, you, you know, once you've got, um, really, once you've got the, the basic outline of a, of a resume going, um, uh, you, you just want to be careful not to be dedicating too much of your time and effort um, for just the purpose of building your resume. Now, that's not to say there can't be other reasons to, to want to be continuing to participate in those shows and certainly recognition and, um, you, you know, kind of getting a, a review from your peers can be very valuable and can be a motivating factor for creating your work in the first place. You know, not every artist wants um, you, you know, to, to be solely focused on a gallery career and, and the sales side of things. And that is perfectly legitimate. But what I would say is if you are interested in showing in galleries and you're interested in pursuing sales, I would just balance fairly carefully how much of my time and energy um, and how much of my future I'm dedicated are dedicating toward, um, you know, show submissions and, and, and that kind of effort. Um, and, and, and frankly, um, I, I know a lot of artists who are successfully showing and selling in galleries and who have built um, fairly successful careers and some very successful careers without having ever participated in a national jury show or having won any awards that they have just gone um, you know, kind of straight, have put their focus straight on the, the for, for lack of a better way to say it, the commercial gallery side of, of their careers. And so, you know, it, it's a balancing act for sure. But um, Chris, looking at your work and, and the quality of the work, I, I just would say that um, I would not have any hesitation in encouraging you to present the work to galleries as it stands and, and to start pursuing that a little bit more actively. Um, and, and that I would anticipate you to receive, um, you know, positive responses and to be able to start to get sales going. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Santana, I think I see you've got a comment. Yeah, I did put it in the chat, but Chris, your work's amazing. It's really shows so Thank much you. skill and so much mastery of the medium. And it really captures beautiful moments in nature and time. I mean, the waves and the water. Wow. Anyway, uh, and signatures. I, like you, I tend to the least obtrusive, try to make the signature very unobtrusive. So sometimes I prefer the right, but sometimes it's on the left. But I did notice Monet would sign all over the painting, like sometimes on the top. So. So that's all I wanted to say. And good luck, because I think you should be showing in some very high-end galleries. So. Well, Santana, thank you very much. Yes. Um, yeah. And, and I think that echoing that, um, I think it's important that when we're talking about things like signature and, and again, framing those kind of things, that we're talking in terms of maybe 
not even best practices, but better practices, but not rules. There are, you know, when it comes to these kind of things, I wouldn't think of them as commandments or do or die kind of things, um, but, but rather just, um, again, working towards um, standardization. Chris, let's talk about pricing. Um, and, and I think um, th this is an, another important area for us to focus on with your work. Um, talk to us a little bit about your approach to valuing the work and how you've arrived at the, the price points that you're showing on the work. Uh, my gut feeling is they should be priced a little higher. Uh, I'm, I'm probably at about seven or eight dollars an hour. Uh, Yes, that's what I was going to say. Is that if we look at the per square inch, maybe we start to feel like, okay, yeah, it's it, you know maybe that's okay. But if we think about the time and the detail that's going into this, um, you know, there are uh, workers at fast food restaurants that are probably generating more revenue per hour, than, you know, and and so that that definitely needs to be a consideration. But even beyond that. Um, one would anticipate that in, in a gallery showing work at, at, at this kind of level with this kind of detail, that these price points would probably put you, um, you know, certainly at the lower end of the spectrum of, of the values of, of competing artists. Um, and that's not a position you necessarily want to, to, to be occupying. Um, and, and so, um, you know, I, I think we're, we're going to encourage uh, an exploration of boosting those prices a little bit, too, as, as, as you have the opportunity to show the work to galleries. Yeah, that, that's a tough one, because when I, I, I guess we've talked before, I've communicated, I spent a lot of time tracking different artists and, and galleries and just am fascinated. And I just find so much amazing work out there at what to me seems like reasonable prices from artists that are well-established, well-established websites that are, you know, had to really put the time in to market their work. And in a lot of respects right now, I'm an old guy, but I'm the new kid at this. So but remember, Chris, no one knows that except you and I, um, you know, when, when the work starts to get out there and people are encountering it in a gallery, um, you know, they don't know how long you've been doing it. And looking at your work, they would suspect you've been doing it for your whole life and um, that you're, you're very successful with it. And that's, that's the, uh, the impression that we want to build upon with, with the value of your work. And, uh, you know, to be clear, I don't think you're, you're radically out of line necessarily um, with, with pricing, but um, I, I definitely feel like as you get the work out there and start to get exposure and sales, and especially as you start getting sales in, in galleries um, where those galleries are going to want replacement pieces very quickly, um, you know, it'd be easy to envision that the uh, demand for the work could outpace your ability to supply it if the pricing isn't, um, you know, isn't aligned with the market. And so we just want to pay attention to that as you start getting the work out there. And I, you know, I'm not necessarily saying that you need to raise prices before you start submitting a portfolio to, to galleries, but just that you've definitely got room to move those, those values up. Thank you. Uh, anyone else want to hop in with a comment on pricing or, or value or questions there? Yes, uh, Bill, let me get you in. Should be asking you to unmute there. There we go. Gotcha. Okay. Um, Two, two things I, I've noticed. The one is you seem to downplay your background in printmaking. Uh, and I know that there was some comments uh, on the board that, uh, that your paintings had some printmaking ideas in it. Uh, I don't see that as bad at all. And I don't see how it seems to me that your whole life as an artist, and a printmaker is an artist, <laughs> needs to be looked at as art. And that going from printmaking to, to painting to oils is a, a good progression. And from this, this ought to allow you to be able to go back and do some prints of your oils. So I'll just throw that out. <laughs> and so it may, it may be another thing if you, you, know, you can explore uh, something along like that. The other 
question that I know when I when I first looked at uh, your I liked your work uh, and I'm interested in coastal art because I do some coastal art myself. But you live in a place that has basically you have to go somewhere else to sell your art, and I think that's a real issue. I know for myself that's a real issue. Is how do I in a place that doesn't have any background in art find a place to sell my art and and i and i see that as a real struggle for you and i i understand and i i'm sort of curious and that was and one of the things i was interested in is how do you go about uh, getting out so that you can do that yeah uh, great great comments and question bill and, and chris respond to that first um, point about i mean it, and i agree it kind of seems like you almost are thinking of your career in in kind of separate phases where there was the lithography and, and printmaking um, phase of your life that was maybe more commercial and then you've shifted to painting and fine art um do you view those as completely disparate separate um, um careers um or, or how do you kind of think about your background a uh, couple of thoughts there. First, Bill, thank you for your comments. Uh, as far as returning to printmaking again, let me just uh, do kind of a, a background on some of the etching experience. Uh, I was given a, like a, a small book on etching, read it, and immediately started, dove in. Uh, told my wife I would need the kitchen for about 10 minutes. I had to heat the copper plate, clean the plate, apply the ground, and then burn a taper and, and smoke the plate. About 10 minutes kind of grew into more like about four hours. Uh, we had a smoky kitchen. <laughs> uh, we had this discussion on etching. Uh, when I finally went to lithography, we sort of had the discussion that we would never have etching again. So, so much for that phase of my life. Uh, the lithography was, was promoted by a distributor. So I probably have about uh, 100 editions. You can look up like Chris Forrest art and there's a place called Row Gallery that has a bunch of what's floating around the marketplace. Uh, they were mylar lithography lithographs. Uh, the overhead on them was, was tremendous. Uh, great fun at the time, but I, quite frankly, I don't think the world needs another Chris Forrest original lithograph. So, yeah. yeah was, um, but I, I think I, I kind of echoing what, what Bill's saying though, and, and um, you know, this jumped out to me as I was looking at your work um, yesterday and kind of thinking about that too, is that it is not uncommon, um, you know, it, for artwork um, of your of that subject matter, and especially artwork that is that detailed and, and time intensive, to see the originals up for sale, but then also perhaps see some Jacque prints um, alongside them um, that that uh, you know offer you an opportunity to um, multiply your production um, and offer buyers an opportunity um, you know, across a range of price points to have different offerings available to them. And so that certainly could be a consideration down the line, some other form of reproduction without you having to return to the process of, of lithography um, or etching to that kind of thing. Um, but, uh, you know, um, kind of to the, to, the, uh, to, to the main point there is that you mentioned, well, I'm, I'm, I, you, I think you might have used the word older or something along the lines and more mature, um, but new to the game. But I would, would kind of echo what Bill is saying in that um, all of that experience and that, that you've had throughout your professional career um, could be considered to be culminating in this fine art phase of your career or, and, and be an evolution of that not necessarily need to be thought of as, well, I changed careers, um, you, you know, um, and, and I'm doing something completely different. And in other words, in terms of resume, you should come across as a very experienced artist with a lot of background of, of having sold work that you've created, um, you know, and, and again, that that's now culminating in a career of, of creating your, your finer, the finest art that, that, that you could be creating. 
Let's take some um, comments that came in ahead of time. And these are gonna kind of echo what we've already seen a little bit. Uh, let me get us back over there. Uh, this from Michelle in uh, New York. It seems to me that galleries up and down the Eastern seaboard would be interested in seeing your portfolio and proposal to be included. You know, and I think this um, kind of speaks to that second point that uh, Bill was making. Okay, what if I don't have galleries in my immediate vicinity um, that, that I can access? And, um, you know, I think this is true of, you know, unless you're living in a, maybe either a large metropolitan area or you're living in an area that um, invites travelers, a lot of us are in areas that um, maybe don't have a well-established art market, or um, you know, maybe there are a few galleries, but um, but but not not a, a, a strong art market. And um, you know, my encouragement to you, um, if you're in that situation, and Chris, um, certainly in, in in your case, is to reach out. Um, you, you know, with um, the ability that we have to ship artwork and to communicate electronically and submit portfolios over email, there just shouldn't be any reason that you couldn't access the markets that are most appropriate for your work. Um, and, um, you know, are there going to be some logistics involved in supplying your galleries with, with artwork? Yes, but, and, and, and there's a bit of a learning curve when it comes to figuring out the ins and outs of crating and shipping. But those are all issues that can be worked through and overcome. Um, and certainly many of the artists that I'm representing in my gallery, um, I mean, goodness, I, you, you know, I had an artist in the gallery here in Pine Top this last week who is from Iowa, you know, quite remote from us, but is able to get work to us um, and, and visit us from time to time. Um, I, you know, I work with artists who are in remote New Mexico and, and those issues can all be overcome. Um, and, you know, you want to have your artwork in the place where it's most likely to sell. And I agree in this case with your work that it would make a lot of sense to start, um, you know, and, and again, Kate mentioned it too, to start with, with galleries that uh, seem focused on that kind of subject matter on the East Coast. Um, it's not always the case, uh, you know, a lot of times in these sessions, the featured artist is doing work that could show in a variety of different venues and galleries and markets. But with your work, it is more specific. There is more likely to be an audience um, in an area, um, you know, coastal, coastal wetlands and that kind of thing. And, and there's gonna be more of a, a tendency for people to be um, drawn to the work um, in, in those kind of areas. And the architecture of the homes and the, the interior design and decorating is probably going to favor your work in those kinds of markets as well. Um, which, you know, in some ways is a little bit limiting, but it also makes you, uh, makes it a little bit easier for you to know where to look for those galleries. Um, anyone want to hop in with comments or qu further questions on kind of gallery targeting? I, I think though, Chris, we would very much encourage you um, to, to be putting the work out there and, um, uh, you know, getting, getting those opportunities for galleries to see the work and then uh, ultimately for collectors to see that work. Um, boy, and we're, we're quick. We always do this, um, quickly run out of time. Any last comments that you'd like to pass on to Chris? Um, you know, in, in, oh, let me pull up one more comment that came in ahead of time because I saw a lot of these kinds of comments and I, I appreciate everyone who takes the time to submit ahead of time. This one from Edna in, in Washington. Um, and she says, your work is stunning. I mean, I think that, that we see, and we heard it here in the session, that, that, that there's just a very strong reaction to the work. And boy, that, that you're able to elicit that kind of consistent reaction to the work, um, you know, again, is, is, is an indication that you would expect to see that same kind of reaction to have the work out in the public, in galleries, and giving people the opportunity to see it. I mean, I think the name of the game, Chris, and, and what I would encourage you to think about as your next step is exposure. We need to be getting your work, not only in shows, but also in venues that are really focused on working with collectors and, and selling the work. And, and we would anticipate that you would find an audience there. Um, she says, your work is already at a very high level. I'm sure there are galleries out there that would love to represent you. And I, I agree with that. Um, I, I think um, we would be negligent uh, not to give them the opportunity to see the work, see your portfolio and have the opportunity to show it. Yeah. You know, how encouraging, how kind. Thank you. 
Anyone else want to get in the last word in our session today? We've got about 30 seconds left. Anyone want to throw out some last and final comments? Uh, let me go to Joyce. Uh, if I can get you unmuted here, Joyce. There we go. Uh, yep, gotcha, Joyce. Okay. Um, one suggestion, and this is just a suggestion, but what about signing your name vertically? on the right hand side so that it's not taking up so much of the picture plane. Yeah, cert certainly a thought, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes, um, I think the challenge there is that, um, and, and I, again, I have seen that uh, there are artists certainly who do that um, and, and the, on some pieces that it, that it might work well with. Um, my suspicion is that the most collectors would kind of now, why did he do that? Um, you know, because they're just so accustomed at this point to seeing again, what they're used to is that signature typically in the lower right corner horizontally. Um, you know, you can work with the scale of the signature. Um, you know, there's some options there. Ultimately, this is another one of those issues. And I think we'll, we'll close on this. This is another one of those issues that we could debate and agonize over, um, you know, and there, there could be conversation endlessly about what's the right way to sign the artwork. And ultimately, I'm not sure that it's so much about knowing what the right way is to, to, to sign your artwork, because I'm not sure that's a real thing, knowing, um, you know, what's right or wrong here. Instead, it's about deciding. Um, this is how I am going to sign my work. Um, and once you've made that decision, I think you'll find that collectors accept it. Um, you know, that, and, and again, that especially if you're consistent about it, it's not that, oh, why did he sign it this way? It's, oh, this is how Chris signs his work. Um, and so I think that, again, just the more consistent and, and uh, stable you can be in your, your use of your signature in the long term. And that's not to say it can evolve a little bit over time, but again, you just want to not be experimenting ad nauseum with uh, different signatures and different placements. Um, it's better to decide and just stick with it and move forward with it. Chris, thank you so much for um, uh, agreeing to share your work with us in, the, in this forum and letting us see and admire and talk about your work. Um, and um, certainly, and, and Chris is in the Art Business Academy, so we're working together to get uh, uh, get the artwork out there into galleries, um, and, and there'll be more to work on there. But thank you so much, Chris, for joining us. Uh, Jason, it's been an absolute pleasure. And I just really like to thank the group for all your encouraging thoughts. Uh, it's been very helpful uh, for me, and I, yes. I appreciate it. Yes, thank you. And thanks to everyone for joining us. Um, we will be back here next week. Next week's session is an Ask Me Anything session. Um, so get your questions ready, anything that's come up in these sessions that you'd like further clarification on or something that you're working on um, with your art or your career, uh, we'll be taking your questions. So we'll look